Apple Gift Card is a practical gift that unlocks a world of entertainment and fun. You can send it via email or give a physical card to your loved ones. Your friends and family can spend it on their favorite Apple services, including Apple subscriptions. Apple Gift Card can be used to buy all things Apple. Products, accessories, apps, games, movies, TV shows, iCloud Plus, and more. Visit apple.com for details and to send Apple Gift Cards to your friends and family this holiday season. MLB playoffs are near, and you know what that means, Alex? Yep. Flippin' Bats will be staying up late and having all the fun. From breaking down the most important stories and games, nobody's done what he's doing. Nobody. Not even Babe Ruth. To interviewing baseball's biggest stars. I felt like I was pitching more stress. I was trying to be so perfect. No one covers America's pastime like us. So as we sprint towards this year's World Series on Fox, please make sure to listen, follow, and subscribe to Flippin' Bats with Ben Verlander and me. Alex Curry. Baseball is fun, and so are we. We're going to have fun, dang it. We'll talk to you soon. Food Heals Podcast, Episode 281. There is light, and even though there's a lot of darkness in our world that's kind of human created, but there are opposite forces of dark and light in the universe. Our minds, our lives, and our energy fields are like a garden. And if you don't plant flowers, what shows up are the weeds. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately. All right, welcome Food Heals Nation. I'm Allison Melody, and happy, happy Halloween to you. We're going to get right into the show because I am too excited for today's topics where we're going to talk ghosts, angels, Halloween rituals, and even channel some dead celebrities to see what they're (laughs) up to now. Whether you believe or you don't, it's going to be a fun and fascinating discussion. Roll it, Roxy. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. All right, she is the Food Heals OG co-host, who is also the founder of CBD Fountain, Central Oregon's finest hemp CBD company. She extracts her own CBD oil and puts it into vegan organic ingredients to help you, your family, and your pets, and her brand new precious pup, Ernie, achieve the best health possible. Please welcome Susie Hardy. Hi, Allie. So glad to have you back in the studio. I know, it's amazing. It's best when you're in person, so I'm so happy you're here. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. And ever since she was a child, she has seen and sensed ghosts and spirits, and she's learned how to manage those experiences using the ability to connect with the angelic and other realms. I thought she'd be the perfect guest to explore the unknown with on today's Halloween episode. Please welcome psychic and fellow podcaster, Laura Powers. Hey, it's so great to be here, and we're talking about one of my favorite subjects. I'm so excited. Oh, my. (laughs) God, we're so excited. This is like one of my favorite topics. I think it's one of Susie's favorite topics. Uh, Yeah. Talking about the unknown and the things we can't physically see in front of us. Yeah, which I think is actually most of the world in in a way, like is this unseen realm. Um, But yeah, it's it's my jam and I love talking about it. And I love that Halloween time of year is a time when most people are like thinking about this and like having an awareness when maybe the rest of the time they aren't. (laughs) And the doggies are excited too. Yes, they are. And that's going to happen. Sorry, everyone. We've got two dogs in the studio, including Susie's brand new one. He's new. He's very (laughs) new. how, how How many months? Three months. Three months. And I've only had him a week. Aww. So we're just going to throw him into the mix. Here we go. <laughs> and he's just following Jackson around like, are we going to play now? Are we going to play now? <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> All right. So Laura, when did you first realize that you could see ghosts? Well, I think I actually grew up thinking I was crazy. Um, so I like from what age did you like? Like pretty have little. An I mean, I remember asking my mom when I I think I was probably about seven if she saw things. I'm a very observant, and so I could tell that other people weren't reacting to what I was reacting or right. sensing. And uh, she, by her answer, I knew she didn't know what I was talking about. It. So pretty much like ever since I was little, I was like, I better just not talk about this. And it really wasn't until I was in college that I got validation. A family friend described a ghost in detail that I'd seen but never told anyone about. Out. Okay, so and, wait, stop. Yeah. <laughs> Go back. Yeah. Tell us one of your earliest memories of seeing or hearing 
What, what was it auditory or visual? All the time. I mean, so I'm clairvoyant and sometimes that means seeing things in the physical reality. Like I would, I was like the kid in the sixth sense where I would see ghosts and not even know that they were ghosts. Like they I looked, see dead people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So what was one of your earliest recollections of like, um, oh, look at that. Yeah. I just, I just, it was happening all the time. And one of the things that would happen very frequently was at night, I, you know, you see with my third eye. So it would be like at night I would see all this stuff. And I, I believe our minds, our lives, and our energy fields are very much like a garden. If you don't plant flowers, which shows up automatically, are the weeds. So, like a lot of the stuff I was seeing was quite dark. Wait, say that again. I know that's yeah. because really yeah. that's really it's, and it's, the it's, reason it's, I and there's a reason I want you to say it again. Okay. Go ahead. Our minds, our lives, and our energy fields are like a garden. And if you don't plant flowers, what shows up are the weeds. Aww. So ghosts and demons, entities, things like that. The dark stuff is just going to show up. You don't have to invite it in. It'll just show up until you learn how to protect and clear your space. Uh, so, your garden. if I may just interject a personal story, my brother used to see ghosts as a child as well, yeah. and what you just said made a lot of sense because he he was born into a family. My mom, we we've we had lost family members. My mom used to see psychics. Like he was born into the perfect family for this. We'd have been like, who'd you see? Was it Uncle John? Yeah, like, what right, did they say? Right. But he was terrified. Yeah, because he didn't know. He didn't understand up. it, yeah. and he would see energy fields, and often at night. And he would come to my bedroom as a, we were both four, we were four years apart, and he'd be like, "Can I sleep with you?" He didn't tell me why. I'd be like, "No, creepo, go away." You know, like. And then when we found out later, we're like, oh my God, as a kid, how terrifying, but yeah. he had a gift just like you had a gift and didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. That's why I'm so passionate about teaching about this stuff because we don't go through like psychic school when you're little. We yeah. don't learn this stuff, but we should. I really feel like we should because uh, you know, if you're already very psychic and you ha don't have the tools, it can be very difficult. And and by the way, uh, you know, a lot of people like your brother and myself, we, we never had to train. Like this was just there. No. But I believe he didn't even want it. He really didn't. Right. Want it, because right? it's the dark stuff that shows up. Right. Until you learn how to bring in the light like the angels. That's so um, scary for a child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I for me, like nighttime was often very intense because it would be like seeing like a reel of like horror movie images like over and over again. This is my worst nightmare. I don't even watch horror movies. Because I don't <laughs> want that in my brain space. Yeah. And so that can happen a lot for people that are already very psychic, but even for those who maybe aren't automatically having it with training, they can learn to access, you know, not not the scary stuff, but the the light stuff, their guides, their yeah. intuition. So I think it's really, really How did empowering. you deal with that as a kid with the dark I stuff? just tried to block it out. I mean, I I think the only reason I didn't have more issues is because I think I'm I'm pretty tough and like you know, hard to scare, I guess, you know, <laughs> because yeah, but I, I just remember being like, I'm just going to try to ignore this best I can. But I didn't, it, it was pretty tough until I learned how to call in angels. And then like everything changed very dramatically. How did you learn how to do that? Um, I went to psyching myself when my life was basically falling apart. And I had tried to block everything out, which a lot of people, I don't know if your brother ever did this, but a lot of people that have these abilities, they, you know, the dark stuff, and they're like, wow, I don't want this, this is traumatic. And they just try to block it instead of learning how to clear out the stuff that isn't good, like weed your garden, basically, and then plant the good stuff. And so that's what I did. I went to psychic because I was pretty lost and confused. And she explained to me how when I blocked out my abilities, I blocked out the good too. He did. And, that's what he did. Mm, and that's what she said. Yeah. And then I, you know, said about taking classes, psychically opened back up, invited angels in because I'd never known to do that before. And immediately had this incredible angelic visitation experience. And like my life changed like, very dramatically and very quickly after that. Wow. And that's what you help people do now who have this gift. Yeah. So I teach psychic development classes. I teach group classes. I teach one-on-one -on -one training, especially um, over the phone and online. So I have clients all over the world. Um, I have seven books on this stuff. So my book, Diary of a Psychic, if you want to learn more specifically about different abilities, how they manifest, practice exercises you can do on your own, my book, Diary of a Psychic, has all that stuff in there. That's like the first book I ever read on this was called Adventures of a Psychic by Sylvia Brown. And it blew oh. my mind. You remember <laughs> Sylvia, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's fascinating. And I think it's very helpful that you're able to do what you do and help others. And I think for those of us who don't see them, I mean, I have had some experiences that I cannot explain, but I can't say that I see them on a regular basis. I've definitely, there was one in North Carolina, I saw clear as day, and then I saw his grave. And I was like, holy shit. But other than wow. that, I don't experience it on a nightly basis. And I'm not trying to call ghosts into my life, but I am trying to cultivate a more loving relationship with my spirit guides and angels and all of that type of thing. And I love that you help people 
do that. So I would love to hear, you know, any advice you have, because it is Halloween. The darkness is out there. Tell us about that and then how we can protect ourselves. Because, you know, I'm going to walk down Santa Monica Boulevard with all the people. <laughs> it's a lot of energy. It's so much fun. But there's a lot of dark energy, too, as much as there is celebratory energy. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So I'd say I think this is just a time of year when the veil between the worlds is thinner than normal. I think it just has to do with the time of year. Like it's it's Scorpio time, which is about the unseen you know, kind of being hidden coming so forward. So it is more to do with just <laughs> celestial timing as opposed to us being open to it, I guess. Yeah, yeah both. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, depending on which hemisphere you're in, obviously this varies, but I think it's also the time of year things are getting darker here in the northern hemisphere. But again, in terms of the astrology, that's regardless of, of which hemisphere you're in. I think that's what's happening during Scorpio, for example. And I mean, these cultures all over the world have this, you know, we have Halloween, All Saints Day, Dia de los Muertos, I mean, this is something that's celebrated yeah. universally. And I think there's a fun element to the darkness and to the scariness. That's why we dress oh. up in costumes and we like... I think it is fun. Yeah. yeah. And it's well, my favorite do holiday. Do you know what? I recently <laughs> saw that movie, oh, the Pixar movie about Dia de los Muertos and the... Oh, yeah. What was that called? Coco. Coco. Thank yeah. you. I finally saw it. It was beautiful. And it, like... Having multiple loving, loved family members that have crossed over, that have died, that are on the other side, that I have felt like have been around me or have had connected through psychic experiences and dreams. Yeah. Like I've connected with my mother in a dream. Mm-hmm. I connected with an uncle in a psychic reading where just I find all of this super fascinating. It's been brought up to me. My mom, like I said, my mom had, and my aunt, who's her twin, had psychic experiences since they were very young premonitions and seeing ghosts and then my brother who was very young knowing that he has seen them and just I'm, I'm always and I've not really had you know so much of a direct connection as more like intuitive uh experiences Feelings, but yeah but I'm always fascinated by people that can connect to people that have crossed over yeah I mean I I think that the amazing thing is so many people have these abilities but they just have never tried it yeah. so I teach classes and over and over again it'll come up where People are like, oh, you know, I was just kind of curious, just want to try it out. And then we start doing psychic exercises, and they're like super psychic. That's you know, cool. imagine like if you had some kind of, uh, you know, affinity, but you know, you know, what if you're an amazing painter, but you never tried to paint or, you know, that this can happen where people have, you know, really strong abilities that they've never tapped into. So if it runs in the family, you probably have it. And I bet if you were to take some, you know, psychic development training that you might be amazed by what came out in my case, I'm just very clairvoyant. So there's lots of different clairs the clairs are the different psychic you abilities see. yeah so clairvoyant is seeing means clear seeing in french um and then there's clear audience which is hearing there's um clear cognizant which is when you just know things clear sentient is feeling like basically when you f- feel emotions yeah. and energy and so everyone manifests differently and even clairvoyance for example a lot of people can have it but they have to learn how to use that mechanism so it's in the pineal gland which is in the brain and even when I was uh, young you know I, I, I would see things but when I was getting my training it took me a while to learn how to use it on purpose because it would have come in it would just come in because it's not necessarily at that time going throughout your daily life of an asset it's kind of like a distraction oh, or like a, I was oh my like God. trying to ignore it because right. I was like wow this is unpleasant <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't want to see that and by the way guys this is something that I think is so interesting especially during Halloween time is like these entities and kind of things are more active during this time but just like you can see illusion with your physical eyes you can with your third eye as well which is so interesting so one time i was seeing this like scary looking demon guy like he had like like have you seen the movie legends no. Okay, so it's with like Tim Curry and Tom Cruise. It's a crack up if you want to check it out. But, I'm already scared. Um, Tim Curry is always scary. Tim Curry <laughs> plays this demon and he's like red skin, the big black horns, oh giant. My God. That's like what I was seeing. And I'm like, wow, this is really scary looking, right? But somebody, Just hanging out in your living room? Like, where are you seeing? <laughs> yeah, I was in my house. in my. But I was seeing this being oh and they would ju- they could move around and show just show up wherever, right? And, and connect with you kind of energetically. But something about the energy didn't match. And so... I, like it didn't feel like this big powerful demon, and so I asked my angels and spirit guides to show me what it really was or what it really looked like, and I saw this tiny little thing that was projecting the image of this giant demon. So it, it, well, wow. a lot of times when people have like mental illness or they're really struggling with some of the stuff, if they're um, very clairvoyant, they are being presented images that are not even psychically real 
just like someone in our physical reality can show you a movie or can show, it's not real. That's not actually happening. You know, there's illusion with, cl with clairvoyance as well. Now, if you're, so there are studios on the other <laughs> side making giant projections of it's the Wizard it? of Oz. <laughs> yeah, it, that's exactly what it was like. It was like the Wizard of Oz, except it's not a movie. I mean, it's just psychically, they can just create that image. Like, yeah. It's like they VR. Can just, yeah, they can just mentally be like, look at that, you know. Um, and the one gift that is not going to be influenced that way is like if you're an empath or a clairsentient, which is feeling energy, like energy doesn't lie. Feelings don't lie. So you can't fake that. So that's why when I saw this image and the energy feeling didn't match this kind right. of scary looking right, thing, right, right. if you don't have training, you might be seeing all this stuff and be like just taking it as truth because you're seeing it, even though it's still being, it's still illusion, even psychically. Well, I promised Food Heals Nation that we would talk about some celebrities and check in with them and see how they're doing. But first, I just want to ask you, do you guys know the concept of the 27 Club? Yes. Okay. No. So it's a group of people, mostly musicians, who all died at the age oh, of 27. Oh, yes. Okay. And I don't believe this is a coincidence. So I want to know what it is. So I made a list of some of them. So I'm just going to tell you who they are. Kurt Cobain, 27. Amy Winehouse, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison, Brian Jones from the Rolling Stones, Ron, who they called the pig pen from the Grateful Dead. And there's a bunch more people who all died at the age of 27. And I want to know what is the reason. This drives me crazy. Okay. The, the, I, to be honest, I can't say that I have the answer to this. I, I mean, I think, I think there's various aspects. I think that when you get to a certain point in fame and visibility, sometimes you, the, the darkness attacks you until you learn how to have boundaries and protect yourself mm -hmm. until your openings are smaller. And then the other thing I'm not, by the way, I, just to be clear, I'm not saying that these people did this, but there are deals with the devil, which at a certain point your time was going to like Whoa, run wait, out. Stop. And like, there are uh, deals with, with the, the devil. I would say that I wouldn't say the devil, but like demons or or be, the dark, dark beings that can. So I'm going to be famous. You're going to have my soul. That type of thing. Yeah, and it, although I would say it's not necessarily like they have your soul, but maybe in exchange for certain things, certain other things will be given. Oh my god. Yeah. So I've I've witnessed certain people where I was like definitely a deal with me. So this can be made with, you know, demons or entities or How do I make a deal? No one's ever come gin. to me no. and been like, hey, just, do you want to make a deal? You just to be, be clear. Singer? Too white light. Just to be clear, I don't recommend making these deals because a deal like this is never going to be in your favor. Yeah. I mean, I know that from the movies and stuff, but it's just like, hey, why not me? You didn't try? I mean, you don't know what I, what I would have said. But but I think a lot of times when a, pers a, a, devil a person's light is... <laughs> When a person's <laughs> hashtag <laughs> Dell's not into vegans. <laughs> when a person's light is so strong, like the dark wants to pull them down. So I think that can happen a lot too. The dark does want to pull us down. And so what are some things we can do to protect ourselves? So I'm a huge advocate of working with angels. Uh, Archangel Michael is an amazing protective so angel. Well, I'll just say one more thing, which is that we have to release any patterns or behaviors in ourselves, which are openings or conduits for the darkness. So that can vary for different people. Um, and it can change over time. For me, uh, as I was getting more visible, uh, I was guided to stop drinking. And I, I stopped and I, I had things start to happen, like I would get roofied or, you know, things like that. And it was just showing in me. In order like, to tell you, you need to stop. Right. Oh, my God. Um, and then, I hope I don't get roofied. And then even another <laughs> one would be, each other like, holy shit. Um, another one would be like what we talked about, just we did another recording um, earlier, which was about, uh, I talked about parasites. So that was another thing, like that's, negative parasitic energy feeding on me. So I need to release that in order to have well, more protective energy. Parasitic, parasites too, even in human Absolutely. beings, right? Yeah. Well, when I went through this big parasite cleanse, I also ended up releasing a lot of, you know, human relationships that were, I think, unhealthy. So there's, there's, yeah. so anyway, when you, anything that, um, is a magnifier, so fame, um, wealth, beauty, you know, power influence. These are all like magnifiers and anything that is a magnifier will then increase your sort of openings for the dark, if that makes sense. And you have to like shore those up or you could have issues, bigger issues. Was Kurt Cobain murdered? <laughs> all right. So I, what I'm going to say here is that I did it. That's a, the I did, one you I did a, okay. a, a He's Cobain. in the 27 Club. I don't know. 
I did a Kurt Cobain uh, channeling, which you can read. I turned into a blog post and you can read it on my, uh, the blog page of my website, healingpowers.net. I'm so excited. And you can read there. And, and what I'll say is just kind of let his words speak for him because, and so yes, uh, <laughs> Courtney Love murdered him. I, I'm just going to say, what? we're um, just having fun. You didn't see that documentary where they like prove that he, she murdered him. It was no. so good. It's on I, Netflix. I, I would just say, read, read the post, what he said in his words. And I'd say that he, he talks about how he didn't see things accurately and struggled with, with That's a lot darkness. of people with depression, right? Or, or psychological yeah. stuff. And I mean, do you think that, um, I, I have a lot of questions for you. I, I will. Before. One thing I will say, uh, just without being super overt is that there are a lot of things that don't make sense about his death and I'll just leave it at that. Watch the documentary. I'm trying to find out what it was called on Netflix. It's not the, it's it not the main one. Was it Washington? Let me look it up. It's not the main one. It's the other one where they basically prove it. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Soaked in bleach. Or soaked in bleach. You got it. Okay, I think that's it. Watch it anyways. Okay, sorry. Go so on. My, my general question about, because you mentioned the dark side, the darkness. I always, at this stage of my life, thought that that was kind of human created. That, And this is just my spirituality that there is light, and even though there's a lot of darkness in our world that's kind of human-created, but you're saying no, that there are opposite forces of dark and light in the universe. Yeah. Go I on. mean, I, by the way, I'm not Christian or Catholic, but in you know the book of Genesis, you know, God separated the darkness from the light, and I believe that that's true. That happened, and there's a, a purpose for it. I mean, the darkness always has something to teach us, right? So um, while it can be very unpleasant, whenever we get pulled into the dark and some, something is revealed, there's something right. that we learn. So that's not to say we should just dive right into the darkness all the time or whatever <laughs> in terms of like energetically, but there's always something that is being shown in its own way. But yeah, no, I, I see but that there are these actively two different forces for sure. Okay. So then you've seen that in your own, that you felt that or seen that in your own experiences oh, versus absolutely. just the, because I look at ancient writings from the Bible and, and around that is kind of like, okay, well, that was a different time and they're not necessarily more spiritual or more open psychically than we are now. Um, and they also yeah. wrote, like, had stories that they then wrote down hundreds, if not thousands of years later. Right. So I don't look at that as necessarily proof, but I believe you in your personal experience. Yeah. So I, you know, I've seen and um, had Demons the experience of, yeah, fallen, <laughs> fallen angels, entities that feed on darkness. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of shades of gray as well. Like it's not that everything is pure light and pure dark. Yeah. The truth is that there's a lot of gray, um, but there are some forces. <laughs> probably <laughs> even more, probably even more. But there are, the, there, there are definitely, you know, beings that are dark and feed on darkness. And I think of these beings as like energetic parasites that feed yeah. on yeah. fear. See, that makes more sense to me than stress, the Stress, anxiety. Honestly, from mm-hmm. my perspective. Like, yeah. because I've... They, they, they need a certain kind of food. They're, they derive energy from fear. They derive energy from pain. And they are going and trying to get that energy however they can. And they will also try to influence things to maintain their food source. Can so, they be useful? In terms Ex- of the, except for uh, making deals with them, that's what I'm saying. As <laughs> lessons, like we learn, sometimes we learn um, spiritual truths yeah. through connecting them, but but not in the sense of like, are they going to help you move forward in no. your your life goals or something? <laughs> no, I'm <just> say no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I would like to ask about people who are seemingly happy and funny and get everything they want, and then they commit suicide. Like, let's check in with, like, Robin Williams. Like, what happened there? How is he? Is he in the light? Oh, um, so he's another one that I channeled. So if you want to read that message from him, um, you, you can read that. I know that he did struggle a lot with depression. And I feel like a lot of comedians yeah, end up, absolutely. you know, going to comedy to mask and try to heal their pain. Mm. So even though I love, you know, who doesn't love comedy laughing? When I sense into comedians, a lot of times I'm like, oh, there's a lot of pain there. Yeah. Um, so he's someone that was very empathic, very feeling is a very feeling oh, yeah. person deep so again read that um message and i'm not necessarily talking about robin williams right now but there are also people who are said to have committed suicide and they did not 
Well, um, we have had this conversation offline, but yeah, yes. Yeah, so I think it's a very convenient out for certain people that maybe are shaking up the status quo right. or yes. um, where there's someone in power wants some silence, et cetera, yeah. where it's just a very easy thing to just say it was a quote unquote. So by the way, if I ever commit suicide and putting that in quotes <laughs> i did not you were murdered <laughs> me too me too Just me to three me. Yeah. it's all on the record none of us are going to kill ourselves no. okay jeffrey epstein what's the deal <laughs> oh she went there you're getting political while i'm gone oh, i mean man. literally i know what i think i've heard he's in israel that's all i'm saying is yeah. he alive is he dead was he murdered or was it suicide those are my questions i i <laughs> This is this is one of those things I'm getting not to say <laughs> because we're not allowed to talk about it. We're not allowed to talk about it. Um, I I guess I will just say that the it's not what it seems. Yeah, and that the the news how that it came out was like hmm, it's a bunch there's of garbage. some suspects information, but yeah, there's a lot more out there. Okay, well, what's a celebrity that you can tell us about that you're like they're doing so well on the other side? They're well, Robin so happy. Williams is amazing. I mean, okay. just to clear to, he was to be such clear, a few, I, yeah. he was one of the few people, famous people, that passed away, and I was like, I per- cried. personally so sad for because he brought so much light. And as a performer myself, like, oh my god, and yeah. he was so talented across the board. And you talk about comedians, like. I always love, when I was living here in L.A., going to see stand-up comedy because it brings such joy. Even when it's bad, it's still good. It's like pizza yeah. or sex, you know? <laughs> but like, And I never had the, the courage to do it myself because it is, when you do fail, it's so harsh. And so the people that do go through it are like these really interesting characters. They have to be so brave and they have to develop yeah. such a thick skin. But at the same time, comedy always comes from pain. Yeah. Always, yeah. always. It doesn't come. It's not happy meets happy meets happy. It's and it's based pain in truth. Turn- yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's why it's funny because people can be Relate like, "Oh, I felt that," and "Oh, yeah, ha ha." And then they, but it's and then it's healing, right? But it is so like I've never met any comic or even yeah, you know, it, it always comes from pain. Yeah. So to your question, Ali, two of the people that uh, started coming forward when I started channeling right away where I was like, oh my God, I can't believe you're here. But there's they were so fun and had an amazing journey. And that's um, Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. Oh my God, I love them. Yeah. Did they have a martini in their hands? <laughs> no, they did not have a place were, to drink. They were very much like in that, like, we're performing, we're having fun, we're singing. Blah, yeah, and they, th- I feel like that's, you know, how they are. Did they come to you because you're also a performer and a singer? Like, why did certain people come to you? I think some of it has to do with, you They're know, Past life relationships gig. and also, <laughs> yeah. Susie, what did you say? You're looking for a gig, <laughs> but actually, Laura's in a way, channel them in karaoke tonight. In a way, you're right. In the sense of, you know, one of spirit crosses, they are still looking to teach and influence and share. Yeah. So even though they can't do it directly through their body, they will communicate with those who can get their message across. So in my case, like I'm going to share their message. So I get a lot of spirits waiting to talk because they want it. They want to communicate. Still, they still want to give their message. And what about Wayne Dyer? In one of my writing courses. Um, like half the people in the course have channeled him because he's so spiritual and everyone's writing these spiritual memoirs and they're like Wayne Dyer came to me and I'm like can he come to me what the fuck yeah I've channeled him as well (laughs) (laughs) yeah by the way I have a book that um, I have not released it yet but it's uh, in process about channeled messages from celebrities on the other side but yeah he's another one again not wanting to stop teaching yeah right and when you're a spirit in the light you're not limited by time and space the way that we are so yeah they could talk to like everybody right put it on their to-do list laura powers yeah allison melody check he's just like giving it all the goods yeah yeah it, a ghost will not be it that way but a spirit in the light will be able just like an angel will be able to communicate with many many you know people at the same time quote unquote <laughs> all right well we have halloween parties to go to and karaoke to get to so Yay. let's wrap up but um can you just quickly give us a little bit of insight into the difference between a ghost and the spirit how to protect yourself on halloween where everyone can find you online Sure. So a ghost is an earthbound spirit, which means their spirit is trapped here in the material plane. And there can be ghosts on other planets. So this, I'm talking about Earth now, but it, God. God, it could be like, we're just saying they're trapped in their Terra. Or, or, or I can't handle the much next, wherever that is. Right and then uh, a spirit in light has transitioned over to the other side, heaven, you know, whatever you want to call it. And so they're going to be operating from that sort of bigger picture and understanding than an Earth-based spirit or ghost. And and if you want to learn more about 
some of the stuff we talked about on on this episode, my book, uh, Diary of a Ghost Whisperer, is just about ghosts. And I I tell stories about ghosts just growing up, you know, having these abilities as well as um, experiences through paranormal investigation, which I've done extensively. You remind me of Sylvia Brown that (laughs) I'm actually friends with, which is how cool is that? Because I worshipped her growing up. Love it. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. Too similar. And then my book, uh, Supernatural Survival Guide, it talks about fallen angels, you know, devils, demons, entities, jinn, um, which we think of as genies in our, you know, kind of Western terminology, but the, the correct name is I've, I've understood as jinn, fairies, you know, angels. You can learn all about that stuff in that particular book. Oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> Susie, where can everyone find you online and Buy some CBD oil, which we didn't get into today. But no, but it wasn't it appropriate. Very it was healing. <laughs> it, it can be healing, but more in the in the physical realm, not in the ghost realm. But well, uh, does it protect against ghosts? No. <laughs> not going to make that of. claim at all. <laughs> nope, not at all. Um, it will just help your physical body here and now. Your meat suit, as I like to say. <laughs> uh, CBDFountain.com at CBD Fountain on Facebook and Instagram. And that's it. Thank you, ladies, so much for being here. Happy Halloween. Yay. Happy Halloween. <laughs> See you next time, Heels Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately.